Hey folks, I'm so excited to be here today at PlatformCon 2022. It's amazing that the organizers got everybody from this amazing new community together and joined for this conference to share knowledge, to learn new things, and to share experiences and to connect to each other. Amazing, and I'm so happy to be here. I'm Susanna Daniels and I work for Spotify as a developer relations lead and more specifically on an open source project called Backstage. To summarize it a little bit, Backstage is an open platform for creating your developer portals. This session will be about Backstage. Luckily, I get a lot of time to explain more about it and to show you the nitty gritty of what Backstage actually is. But first, Let's watch a short explainer video. What is Backstage? Backstage is an open platform for building developer portals. It was created at Spotify and donated to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Okay, but what's a developer portal? And why would I want one? Good question. First, imagine a developer. These days, you're not just writing code. You're also making trips to your cloud provider's console, troubleshooting Kubernetes, managing security and compliance tools, not to mention hunting for documentation that, even if you find it, is rarely up to date. Each task and subtask has its own UI to learn and its own technology to understand. It doesn't take long for context switching and cognitive load to take their toll. And it's happening all across your company. The more you grow, the more chaotic and fragmented your ecosystem becomes. But with a developer portal like Backstage, all your tooling, software components, data, and documentation are centralized behind a single pane of glass. So instead of being overwhelmed by infrastructure, you're in control of it. At the center of Backstage is a software catalog which organizes all your services, websites, mobile features, libraries, and other software components in one place, regardless of how or where they're running. With software templates, you can create new software components with just a few clicks and with your best practices baked in. With everything centralized and searchable, you can explore your entire ecosystem to build collective knowledge, enable collaboration and reuse, and speed up onboarding. And since Backstage has an extensible plugin architecture built on top of modern technologies and common frameworks, it's easy to add functionality to customize your portal to fit your company's needs. Backstage scales with you, so your teams can build quickly and safely together, reducing infrastructure complexity and increasing developer happiness. Join the community and learn more at backstage.spotify.com. I couldn't have explained this better. It's a well done video, I think. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. Um, but yeah, that's still a lot of talk. So let's see Backstage in action. Come join me for this little story. This is a story about an engineer having their first day at a company called Rocket. Rocket is a well-known intergalaxy rocket company founded on Mars, on their main capital, the city of Elon. They specialized in delivering world-class rockets for interplanetary travel. And while you would not maybe expect it, they are also actually the biggest IT company in the galaxy. One of the reasons is that AI took over the rocket science business. The company went through years of digital transformation and like in many companies nowadays, software engineers have become responsible for the core business of this company. They are searching for new engineers to create and launch the Rocket Launch App. It is a mission critical app, enabling customers to order launch while traveling in the Rocket Rocket ship. In short, people are tasked to make sure that before the next launch, the launch app for the Rocket Rocket launch has been launched. While this company might be light years ahead of the competition, and rocket science is probably one of the coolest things we can think about being engineers. We still have to do the engineering stuff. There's still code to be written, bugs to be squashed, things to find out, and the real challenges. Working cross departments with other engineers, with microservices, 
calling APIs. And sorry, even in a rocket company, we still have to do SRE. So I'm an engineer and this is my first day at this really, really cool skill up called Rocket. I'm so excited and during the interview process, I heard all the buzzwords, but also the company ticked on the boxes. Like, would I have enough credits to order free lunch every time with the Lunch Lunch app? The answer is yes, so here I am. We've all been there. During interviews, companies can tell a lot about their stellar environment. But to really, really get to know your new company is taking a look under the hood. And now that this company owns this developer portal, I can do this without too much effort. So let's take a look what they have here at Rocket. The first thing I did after opening my shiny new laptop was going to this developer portal called Rocket Engine. For onboarding, they use a thing which they adopted from Spotify down at Earth, um, which is the golden path. So as an engineer in my documentation here, I will find a golden path and it will like guide me through everything I need to know and set me up for success to get, my role, to get into my role as a backend developer. So it will go through setting up my local environment. How would I need to set these things up? Which dependencies do I need? How do I go about and develop my backend service? Um, it will guide me through the steps and I actually get to do these things. So I do not only read about them, but I also get this experience. Now this documentation sec section, it should essentially contain all your documentation because it is so good to have all the documentation in one place, which they have here at Rocket. So if I would like to search about something, maybe the application I'm working on, the launch app, I can with one search, I can find the application itself, maybe some documentation, installation documents, everything that has to do with my launch application. So let's discover what they have here. This is the software catalog. This is the place where you would list all the services. The whole software estate should be here. Everything I need to know and want to learn about. So I can maybe select here on a type of service. Um, I can find out which of these compon components we own or maybe another team owns. Um, I can also search on some tags, maybe marketing or website. But let's dive into the application I was hired to work on. And that is the launch app. So I'm gonna open the launch app. And this is basically the homepage for my service. I can find out who is the owner. I can see what system it belongs to. So I can see what all makes up this whole system. I can dive into maybe the relationships here. I can see that it consumes an API and I can see the group I'm a part of owning this and I can see the system it belongs to. But this could basically contain every relationship you define. It might have some links here. This page will show basically all the plugins you have configured and find relevant to show for this microservice. One of these is PagerDuty. So I can see who's on call, can create an incident. There's many plugins available for all the tooling you might use. Well, let's take a look at the pipelines. So Backstage is there not to replace your tooling. It is there to make one view for you to understand what's going on. So if there would be a problem, for instance, with, with this pipeline, it would show failed. Um, I could dive into the individual steps, maybe, maybe take a look at the log files. But if I find a problem, I would still need to go to the tool and identify what's going wrong and solve it. For instance, I might have forgot to run prettier on the documentation which is included with my application. The pipeline will fail. I will go back to my IDE or wherever I run uh, prettier from and I will have to like do the pull request again. And hopefully it will succeed this time. We are gonna take a look at the API because this is the API the application I'm working on uses. So I want to understand more about it. Once again, I can see that it's managed by a team, which is the flight core team. I can see 
everything I need to know about this specific API. I can also see the relations and I can see that there's, besides my application, there's another application using this API. And I can, of course, find the documentation for this API. This will really make, give me a jump start. I can read the documentation, but I can also look at the definition and learn what kind of response I could expect if I do a certain request. So this builds confidence and I get to learn more about this microservice. So another thing, another plugin we've installed here is Bazaar. This is a marketplace for internal purposes. So if you need help on your team, you might have a lot of knowledge, but you might just miss that CSS knowledge. You could post it, for instance, here on the Bazaar, and you can ask for this help. You can tell people that it has a certain amount of effort. You can see who's responsible. I can click this link and join the Slack channel and maybe ask more information. Or you can go to the entity page, discovering more about the microservice. Now we own this, but we manage this actually for another department. I can see who's running on call. Here again is the open standing work. Uh, and I can check out the pipelines. While we still manage it, it's for another department. This other department, they use GitLab. As you can see, I've used an if statement here to display a certain plugin depending on which um, service I'm using, either GitHub or GitLab in this case. Now you might wonder, how is this all defined? And that is a good question. So let's take a look at the definition for my application. Going to the launch app, you can see here that there's the whole definition of the application. This is all the metadata. This is managed by one team. Like your whole company could be working on this inner source project, but essentially one team should be responsible for your metadata. You can find out everything here. There's also specific configuration for some plugins. Then we use annotations. Um, and you can see that the relationships also come from this. Now for the if statement, I specifically look if it uses the GitHub project slug or the GitLab project slug. And depending on that, I show either one plugin or the other. It's a small thing, but it has a huge impact because developers will have less friction when they go to this page. They just know that they will see some pipelines there, no matter what tool they use. Be it Jenkins, be it GitLab, be it GitHub. There's many different plugins available. We're now counting over 60. And it might as well be that one of your favorite tools is already there. If it's not there, then it's quite straightforward to start creating a front-end plugin. So I'm gonna go to create, which lands me at Backstage Software Templates. Backstage Software Templates are a great way for organizations to ensure engineers follow best practices, guidance, and be consistent in whatever they do. Compare that to following numerous numerous guides, um, infrared code tooling, cloning repositories to get maybe some sort of compliant environment going on. Templates help you to deploy code as frictionless as possible. Ideally, it will help you to deploy a framework for your code to live in, set up things like monitoring, CICD, add docs with your project, and automatically registered in the backstage catalog. Now, we all don't like to type YAML, so that's a good thing. So for me, this will just be a form I have to fill out. I'm going to go with the create template for the React app. I'm going to name it Rocket Fuel App 33. I'm going to add some meaningful description. Now, like I said, you can collaborate with the whole company on the project, but there's always one team being the owner, which in this case is TravelX. That's my team. I'm gonna choose a location. I've set up three integrations. I'm gonna go today with GitHub Enterprise. There's this uh, owner. So this will be my GitHub Enterprise username. And I'm gonna choose the um, repository I'm working in. Well, this all looks good. So everything I put here in the forum is used by the scripts. So it will populate the configuration for the scripts. 
This will create a skeleton template for me to start working in. And it's already done. So hopefully it would now be created in the catalog. And there you go. And this is how I, as a new developer onboarding at a new company, built up confidence and got started on my first project. Now this is of course just an example of a person onboarding at a company, but you can imagine there's many, many other different use cases where you want to make visible all the stuff you have. You want to get that inner collaboration going. You want to share the knowledge internally. For all these use cases, Backstage might be the platform to build upon. If you want to learn more about Backstage, there's this QR code here. If you scan that, you will be directed to a page with the getting started documentation um, and you'll be up and running within anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes. Thank you so much for joining this session and I wish you a wonderful PlatformCon 2022.